Jim Carajalios, founder of the New Blue Party, which is something of a provincial conservative party. I'll, I forget exactly how to describe it. They just had provincial elections. We were supposed to do a follow-up the day after, then it became the week after, and then it became now. So we're having back on Jim Carajalios. Jim, how you doing, sir? Good. It's always good to talk to you. How you doing? The time just flew, eh? Like it's almost... It's it's not it's not three we were supposed to do it the day after something came up then you got you had a cold well, a cold i don't remember what it was yeah. and then we just then you know life happens um so first of all uh th I, for, for anybody who doesn't know you who are you what's the new blue party and then what happened to the election provincial party in ontario uh founded by my wife and i uh, belinda the former mpp for the riding at cambridge and we ran up against the conservative establishment with things like axe the carbon tax, with things like fighting internal party voter fraud, the provincial conservative party, and shenanigans in the federal conservative party. If only Roman was in a free and fair election for leader, then we would see what people had to say about uh, his ideas, but he's not because the conservative party, they already know who's gonna be the leader of that party. And then my wife took the lead against Doug Ford's COVID policies, voted against his, his lockdown bill, and uh, she got kicked out. We both got kicked out of the party. 19 others on the Cambridge Riding Association for the PC party got kicked out. And a year and a half ago, we started the new Blue Party of Ontario. And uh, we've been, we worked really hard to get 124 candidates registered in our first campaign. I fought through bone cancer and my femur. I was laid out for uh, most of 2021, the latter part of 2020, got back on my feet in the fall wasn't even fully walking again, got right on the campaign by the fall and new year of 2022. We were uh, um, approving candidates, putting it in place, and we got through our first election campaign. I know, Viva, you weren't happy with the results because Belinda I, didn't retain her seats. No, and you know Belinda funny? Sidebar, sidebar. The first time I was on, I was calling you Viva, and I just called you again because it just says it right there, Viva Fry. I don't care. I, 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 I answer to Viva on the streets these okay. days. Okay, and then I have a guy on our team, and when I came off, and he said, he said to me, his name's not Viva. And I'm like, I know his name's not Viva. <laughs> well, so I, it's like right there, Viva Fry, and I want to use Jim, a lot of people for two years when they discovered the channel, when it started getting big, thought my name was Viva. Then I said, and then they said, who's David in the chat? I was like, dude, I'm David. And everyone felt, um, yeah, no, Jim, I, I was disappointed. And I, I, I Belinda didn't uh, re retain her seat. I, from what I understand, you didn't get a seat uh, in Ontario. I appreciate everything that goes into starting a new party, getting a full slate, getting a certain amount of, of votes. I was, I was disappointed when the PPC didn't get one seat across Canada, but got, you know, close to a million votes because I'm, I'm I'm childish. Uh, I don't have patience, and I don't uh, really like playing the political game. But tell us why. For those of us out there like me who are disappointed, they see all the work you put in, the hell you had to go through, despite health issues. You ran it. You put everything you had into it. Didn't get a seat. Tell us why we should not be upset. So it was a window of eighteen months, and we really were not operating at full steam ahead for those eighteen months. Obviously, because I was sick, and you're building a party. And to get 124 candidates in place without any institutional support, right? Like we didn't have, it was great to see guys like Roman follow us and finally agree to be against the carbon tax after initially being for it. And he followed Belinda's lead and he came out against the lockdowns when he voted in favor of it. But he didn't support the new blue. Uh, Randy Hilliard didn't support the new blue. Establishment figures across the board, uh, others, and, in, and these advocacy groups didn't support the new blue. Networks like the True North News didn't want to talk about the new blue. We're lucky that uh, you covered uh, and interviewed me and others independents covered us, true independents. But despite all those challenges and others trying to set up fake opposition parties, we got 124 candidates in place, 123 finished the race. Since the election, we've set up and registered 124 riding associations, and we got more votes in our first election than Max Bernier uh, got in the PPC's first election in Ontario. And we're up against a couple parties, three parties, and the Greens have been around for 30 years, but the other two, the Liberals and PCs, over 100 years, right? And so our first challenge is people have to know uh, who the new blue party is. And there's over 10 million people in Ontario. And it, look, it's unrealistic to think in a year, 10 million people are going to hear about the new blue party. And as well, much as... especially. 
especially when you effectively get shut out of any mainstream media that gets the automatic airwaves or the automatic television waves. Right. And, and then on top of that, if you do know who the new blue is, you know who Belinda is, you know who Jim is, but you don't, you don't, we don't have the longevity yet where a voter says, you know what? Uh, that was funny. David yeah. is, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I gotta look, not look at the screen. I gotta look right in the. I'm not. What, I'm not bringing. I'm not bringing any more up, Jim. I'll, I'll bring them up after. Funny, they're amazing. It's like amazing. I wish I could be that funny sometimes. So, they they know who the new blue is. Other voters, but are they sold that we have the infrastructure in place and the people behind it, where we could be the opposition, where we could be the third party? So, and then like we had people. If you look on social media, people who were so upset with Doug Ford for two years. And, they, and a few of them went back and voted PC because they got scared into, well, we can't have another liberal government. So a lot of people don't know that the PCs are doing exactly the same as the liberals. And we have to work through that. And that's not a quick fix. As much as I, we want to be in there as the opposition or the third party in our first election in a year, we're running against some brands that uh, have been around for a really long time. We got more votes in our first election than any party since the 1930s. So that's historic. And a lot of this stuff, this growth in political circles, it's a, it's a little analogous to you start a business, right? You start a business and you're puttering along with uh, sales. And then all of a sudden there's a tipping point where your sales just spike up. It's the same thing with starting a political party. You get the 125,000 votes in your first go ahead. It's not every election you're only going to add another 125,000 votes. And so we're very optimistic about the future, but we got to fight through it. And the only way to earn votes in politics, as much as we like to see um, social media influence and as, as much as we like to talk about media and, no. and social media, this is all important. But someone who's watching you right now is going to have the clincher to vote New Blue if they have a conversation with someone who's already on our team or supporting us. And that will clinch it for them. And that takes time. And there will be a tipping point, And we got to keep working through it. But even though... We don't have a seat. We are going to continue to do what we've done for years before Belinda was elected in the first two years that Belinda was an MPP. And then when she got kicked out and we didn't have the new blue party set up, which is challenge the establishment brass, the left wing politics in Ontario. And that's going to help uh, change the narrative across Canada. We did the Axe to Carbon Tax campaign. Pierre Polyev wasn't supporting it back then. He was quiet on Axe to Carbon Tax. Now he's running a leadership and his tagline is Axe the Carbon Tax. We've pressured the Ford PCs over the last two years to reverse course on policies. They are, they're gonna do it quietly. They're not gonna say, oh yeah, we changed course because of this new party called the New Blue. Of course not. And you see other politicians like you had Roman who've come on side after the fact. He's not gonna talk about us, not gonna say Belinda or Jim, but we're gonna keep challenging uh, the narrative, changing the narrative and changing the course. Uh, for the next four years and and keep building up until the next election. And we're going to help those in the New Blue family who are running uh, for municipal politics. Uh, a lot of people step forward. Municipal elections coming up in October. Okay, that's good, actually. That was my question is, provincial elections, are they determined or can they be triggered early like federal in Ontario? Uh, they're determined uh, end of October, October 20-something. Um, the campaign's actually already on. It's it's interesting. Uh, provincial elections, uh, I think, start in like June or something, months in advance. And then there's a deadline uh, later this week to register across Ontario. But the election date is fixed. But there's no political parties in municipal elections. And, um, uh, you know, a political party can't officially run candidates under a banner. Um, it's, it's the way the left kind of disguises. Oh, no, no, municipal politics are just, you know, nonpartisan affairs. There's no political parties, but most of the trustee and counselor spots uh, end up getting taken by left-wing ideologues uh, because a lot of conservatives don't run and the left has the institution uh, in place to recruit candidates. So we've had a couple webinars. Uh, very quickly, other groups jumped forward, copied our webinars. We've reached out to people on our email list to encourage them to run. And after the end of this week, we'll see who's registered and try to give support to those running for trustee and running for council. So that's something else that's going on. It's been very busy. Like it hasn't slowed down well, since the election. That was more the question. When when would be the next provincial elections uh, for MPPs? Is it so? Four because years? Ford got a majority, yeah. and um, because the MPPs in his caucus are just going to toe the party line like they always do, um, we're looking at four years. Now something can happen uh, earlier if a bunch of them uh, quit the PC uh, caucus and the PC party, and he goes down to a minority. 
but we're looking at 2026. And um, I already, look, it was like a couple weeks after the election. And we put out a graphic. I can't remember. We're talking about how Ford is going to just present the same left-wing budget, a good budget if you're a liberal, which is exactly what he did last week. And his top pollster, Nick Kuvalis, who's Tory's advisor and Ford's advisor, starts attacking me on Twitter. Like, I, what, like this guy's got nothing better to do. He's the top advisor for the mayor of Toronto and the premier of Ontario, and they're attacking me on Twitter, calling me names because we're challenging the budgetary measures of the PC. So you could see that even though the next election's not um, until 2026, everything they do, they're worried about the criticism from us because even though we got 125,000 votes and we don't have a seat, we are the opposition because the liberals and the NDP largely agree with everything the PCs do. They're just copying the playbook. So we can hold their feet to the fire in the meantime from outside the legislature. So, I mean, that's okay. But to keep yourself busy, not just politically relevant, but politically growing for the next four years. So you're going to, you're going to support the local municipal elections, trustees and whatever. I, I can't pretend to know how that works. And then what? Just keep plugging away, keep putting out messages, keep staying involved. How do you stay involved in provincial politics now for the next, you know, at least say it four years at most, uh, and continue to grow? What's the strategy? What's the plan of action? So I'm not going to give you the secret sauce because you got to have me back. Like you got to. Uh, I'll have you back whenever you want. I love so, it. Yeah. So it's a grassroots work. And uh, the last two months, our team has been uh, spending time. You know how you, you probably went through this when you ran, right? In the federal election, the ridiculous paperwork that you got to file after your oh, campaign. After, oh, after, and then after the campaign is over, you got to right. do the audit of your of your financials. Right. I mean, that, that took a few months and cost a few bucks. Right. So we got 124 candidates doing their filings. We got 124 yeah. riding associations doing their filings. So we're helping them each and every one. We're not abandoning them because we don't want anyone not to do their filing. We're helping each and every one of them do their filings. We're building the party up at the ground up, helping those riding associations. We're going to roll out a program. There's going to be future conventions for the new blue. Now that we can do them in person, we had one, uh, a virtual one in April put together um, um, before we get uh, the election vote. We're not going to get angry. We're going to turn the anger into passion and we're going to advocate. We're going to hold the PC's feet to the fire with all kinds of different campaign tools. If you followed me, you know what I'm talking about from the Axe the Carbon Tax campaign, from fighting them in court if we have to, from uh, any kind of advocacy work to Belinda uh, challenging them uh, against the lockdown bills. And we're going to do the grassroots thing and grow our party one riding association at a time, one voter at a time. And we're going to uh, unroll the unveil the candidate selection process a lot earlier next time um, and hopefully have as many nominations as possible because. You know, in, in politics today, the leader of the other parties, they just pick their candidates. And then we're surprised that the candidates don't uh, defend their constituents. And uh, that takes a lot of work. And like we just said, three months already passed by. I don't know where the summer went. We've been buried in 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 building the party up. And um, and uh, it, it's going to go by really quickly. Uh, but the, P the Ford PCs don't even give us a chance to look away because they just came back with the legislature last week and tabled their budget. Over $600 million in loans to ineligible businesses during COVID. They wiped it off. Like they're not going back to collect the money. They gave out over $600 million during COVID to businesses that were not eligible for those loans. Can you imagine how many friends of the Ford government yeah, got some was, of those they're, eligible they're loans? They're just handing $40,000 out to any company that incorporated and asked for the money. It's, um... And that's the federal one. So who knows? I don't, I don't know if the Ford PCs had a specific program or if they just picked and choose. They're, they've, they're rolling out massive subsidies for electric vehicles that no one's going to drive because there's not such a demand for it. And uh, on top of that, they've got a $20 billion deficit this year. They we're not past COVID. $20 billion, way larger than anything that the Liberals ever spent under Kathleen Wynne and Dalton McGuinty. Uh, the, the debt of the province is $200 billion, 25% higher than where the Liberals left it. And as bad as McGinty and Wynn were, can you believe the Ford PCs are worse on the fiscal stuff? So you're asking Roman a bunch of questions on social policy. The provincial PCs always said, you know, we're kind of pathetic on social policy. We don't have a backbone. But you trust us. They used to say, trust us when we get in there, 
This is the part you don't like, right? When I start getting a little childish like this. No, no, I, I, I have this. I look, I have the same reflex. It's, it's a human reflex. Well, they Trust used to us. say it, and I was involved. Oh, when we get in there, when we get power, we're gonna fix up these finances, bring those electricity mm -hmm. rates down, grow the economy, and the economy's put, put, putting along, like Fred Flintstone pedaling his car, uh, and they're spending way more than the liberals, and they're not doing anything. They're not like they are exactly a replica of the liberals. And they are the uh, official arm now of the Trudeau Liberal Party in Ottawa. They're the provincial wing of Justin Trudeau. You know what the amazing thing is? Did you see, you probably wouldn't have seen this, but their health minister, the person who got promoted for oh, Doug Kier, Ford. Kier, well, is it Kieran Moore? Sylvia Jones. Ah, okay, sorry. Yep. Their health minister. Kieran is the, what do they call them? Top doc? Ch Ch yeah, chief, chief medical officer of Ontario. Yeah, CMOH. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the guy that they say they follow when they want to say that, and then the guy they ignore when they don't want to say mm -hmm. they follow. But uh, Christine Elliott retired. She didn't run again. So he needed a new health minister. So he goes and gets Sylvia Jones, who was the attorney general in Ontario. So for the last three months, I've seen the Conservative Party of Canada say Mario Mendocino, Justin Trudeau's a federal, what, what is he, the public health minister or something? No, not public health, public uh, works. He's, or, he's the, he's the guy that lied about the necessity to invoke the Emergencies Act. Thank you. He lied, right? Okay. Yep. He should be fired. But provincially, Sylvia Jones, who's the attorney general for the Ford PCs, she not only lied about the justification of bringing in the provincial emergency measures after the trucker convoy, she went one further. She made it law. She made those emergency uh, uh, moves into a permanent bill called Bill 100 Law. But no one's calling for her to resign. They said the conservative establishment said, let's give her a promotion. Let's make mm -hmm. her the health minister because she did a bang up job. So if you're up, if Mario Mendocino was a PC MPP, he would have got a promotion. But because he's got the, the red sign, oh, he lied. They did the same thing, but worse at the provincial level. And we're fighting against the tribalism of politics. You know it, right? Oh, yeah, blue they're... must be good. Red, bad. Same they're color. Called, we'll they're, just... called, they're called the PCs, progressive conservatives. It's as much of an oxymoron as a pregnant virgin or a, a, a jumbo shrimp. Progressive conservative conceptually don't go together unless they're just progressive. And Doug Ford is as liberal uh, as any liberal politician in the States as compared to what conservatives traditionally meant. Jim. You, you need to survive off funding, donations, and crowd support. Where do people find you? Well, obviously I work, and New Blue Party of Ontario takes up most of my time. Um, but everything we, uh, all the donations we get for the New Blue Party goes into the party. So newblueontario.com, and we do have some staff. And we're very uh, fortunate for the support that we have. Uh, but before you become a donor, no pressure, sign up on newblueontario.com so you can follow our emails. We have calls to action all the time. Uh, we'll let you know when the things that are going on in the Ontario legislature that no one else will tell you about. It, it's like a big secret. Oh, oh, $600 million written off budget. No one wants to talk about it. Two years ago, they tried to pass a law in the Ontario legislature where they were going to implement a code of conduct on marriage officiants. And if the marriage officiant didn't follow the code of conduct, they would just take away their marriage license. At first ever, an, an imposition on freedom of religion. No one said a word. And when we blew the whistle, the mainstream media wouldn't cover it. Even the liberals and the NDP wouldn't cover it because I think there was a deal there where the PCs were giving them something. But the PCs took it out of the legislation. That was late 2020 when I first got diagnosed um, uh, from uh, the bout of cancer that I had that I've recovered from. But we're going to keep doing that. But the only way you're going to hear about it is newblueontario.com because the challenge in politics is if a tree falls, no one's there to hear it, did it make a noise? Well, we're making noise, but the establishment doesn't really want to cover us. And some of the right wing independents don't really want to talk to us because we do damage. But thank you, Viva, for talking to me. And Jim, I called you Viva again, but I just can't help it. It's right there. It's I'll, Viva. I'll have you on anytime, whenever you want. And not just because I like you, but I also like you. I'll have people on who I don't like, but I like you. Uh, I, I met you. I heard your voice a while back and it's it resonated. I don't live in Ontario. Certainly would have voted provincially for you. I wouldn't tell anyone else how to vote. 
Uh, but I'll put the links up in the pinned comments so people can find you, follow you, and you'll come back on time to time. Bring me up to speed as to what might be going on in Canada in my absence to make sure I'm up to date. And we'll do it. We're going to have major stuff that's going to come out. I wish you was ready for this one, but I need a couple more weeks. And every time we announce something, they always copy us. They get these fake opposition. So they always copy. So I don't want to announce it, but if you give me a couple of weeks, and I like coming here because you say you like me, and there's so many people that don't like me. It's just the I, way it is. When you I press can't them, understand it. Challenge them. They don't like me, but I like going where people like me. So um, I'll be back. Good. Let me know when you have the announcement ready to go, and we'll come out here and maybe do an exclusive. Thanks, man. All right. Have a good one. Bye.